Hello, science fans, and welcome to Sciencia. Do you ever wonder what it's like to be in the wonderful world of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics? Let us hear from our sheroes, experts, students, and aspiring STEM advocates about what it's like to be passionate about science and technology. Join us in today's episode as we discuss what it's like to be a STEM educator. Can teaching be taught? Do individuals learn to teach or are they endowed with an innate gift for pedagogy? Are certain individuals born teachers? Do individuals learn about teaching from copying others, from listening to lectures, or from reading about it? It is described that there are two methods of teaching, the didactic mode employed by teacher craftsmen and the evocative mode employed by teacher artists. Didactic teaching implies passing on traditional knowledge or lore or teaching how to do something, after which students demonstrate what they have learned by reciting or writing or by repeating the demonstration, as in a science class experiment. But the greatest limitation of didactic teaching is when the educator relies on memorization of the material under study. In this context, the concept of learning is boxed in the idea that as long as a student can replicate or reproduce what has been taught, then he or she has been taught well. However, it can lead to a lack of appreciation of the systems and processes involved within the lesson that is being taught. But learning by emulation, by observation, need not be limited by the tedious process of memorization. After all, the oldest form of teaching is by observation, such as how Plato learned from Aristotle and Socrates from Plato. But we should stop thinking of students as empty vessels that simply needed to be filled with information. Teaching is much like the process of diffusion, that although materials will flow down the concentration gradient, some materials will flow back. And this allows us to cross to the evocative method where the interactions between the teacher and the student would be the primary mechanism for teaching. The Socratic or evocative method places the responsibility of gaining knowledge on the students themselves. The role of the educator or the teacher in this case is to engage in conversation and allow the students to arrive at their own conclusions or hypotheses. And as such, this is strongly limited by the innate desire of the students to learn on their own. Yeah! Neither the didactic or evocative method will suffice on their own. Yes, after all, our students would have such a wide variety of mechanisms by which they can learn. Some individuals learn material effectively when teachers present it sequentially or chronologically. Others may learn better when teachers present material thematically. Some learners, on the other hand, have an affinity for concreteness while others prefer abstraction. <laughs> teaching STEM would benefit from a balance of both didactive and evocative methods, from both the science and the art of teaching. For example, some aspects of STEM benefits from rote memorization as specific processes and activities would transform from being information generating to powerfully destructive with a slight modification of the procedure. But nature is also made up of complex systems that we have yet to fully understand. So discussions and innovative thinking can also help us piece together the different hints and clues that are provided to us in order to figure out the bigger picture. The Philippines needs 19,000 more scientists to be a significant force in research and development. The United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization suggests that a country would need 380 scientists per million of its population. But the Philippines barely has half of that. And so institutions scramble to find funding and support, all of which are much, much needed. But at the end of it, all of our funding and infrastructure would be limited 
by the desire of the Filipino youth themselves to go into the field of STEM. And this is where our educators become essential. So for today, we will be hearing from three Shiros who will be sharing their passion about fostering the next generation of Filipino scientists. Hello, science fans. I am Noah Shen Dating Ginoo. I am an educator who's currently teaching in a private school in Mutinlupa since 2018, and I'm currently taking a degree program of MS Biology in De La Salle University, Manila. Hello, science fans. I am Jane Peras, and I am a science teacher. Hello, science fans. I am Mao Bardeleon, and I'm a science teacher. My STEM passion is psychology and ecology. To start off our discussion, let's first hear about the STEM subjects that our heroes teach and their motivation for going into the field of science education. All right, now I'm teaching grades 11 and 12 biology. So that includes topics of introduction to human and plant physiology, basic genetics, and introduction to cell and molecular biology. I decided to pursue a STEM career and a career in teaching because I feel like I'll be able to pursue my interest and in study and share my knowledge and my passion for science. I am currently teaching senior high school chemistry and I decided to have a career in science education because I actually like studying science and I would like to impart that same passion and love in studying science with my students. Um, I started teaching since 2018, first in the elementary department, wherein I do teach the science subject in, all, in almost all of its fields. And after a school year, I was transferred to teach in a junior high school department, wherein I was given an opportunity to teach um, first in grade 8 physical science, grade 9 biology, and also grade 10 chemistry. How did I decide to pursue a career in education? It just happened. <laughs> the joke lang. Um, back when I was in high school, or at least I think since LM, I do somehow help my classmates in their assignment. Tapos nagsasabi sila na, uy, nagagets namin yung tinuturo mo. So, parang from that um, comments of my classmates, it also motivated me to also pursue an education course. Personally, it was need that led me to the field of education, but it was the De La Salle University system that made me fall in love with it. Together, of course, with the privilege to teach genetics, ecology, and cell biology, the subjects that are my most favorite. But I wonder what could be the favorite subjects or topics that our Shiro's love to teach about. So I will be biased na I love to teach biology. What else? Um, earth science as well. So even though that I only have the opportunity to teach this field of science this school year, I enjoy ako ituro din yung earth science kasi ang engaging din ng students ko. Like, oh, woo! And something like that, yung mga remarks ng mga students, bigla na lang sila magagana. What else? A little bit of chemistry and also physics. Yeah, and I also love to teach them as well. My favorite subject to teach by default is chemistry. I actually enjoy teaching stichometry and organic chem. But I was able to teach on my first year of teaching biology, physics, and earth science. And I find it very fascinating to teach that because it has practical as teaching chemistry because it happens in our daily lives. So, I actually enjoy teaching those subjects. Personally, I really enjoy teaching uh, human physiology to my students because my students really enjoy this um, subject as it's something very relatable and applicable to their daily lives. And I also love teaching ecology and the importance of biodiversity to my students. With the way our heroes talk about those subjects, they really do sound awesome. Now, I grew up surrounded by educators, and even at a young age, I was able to observe their sacrifices and their hard work. So, we all know that the education system of the Philippines is rife with difficulties. But I wonder, in the perspective of our heroes, 
what could be the most difficult aspects of science education. Teaching science in the Philippines actually requires a lot of expertise about the subject, especially if you're teaching higher grade levels. It requires a lot of preparation, especially right now because uh, we're doing online learning. And aside from the preparations, uh, one of the most challenging aspects of teaching is the need for you to fulfill a lot of roles when you are inside the classroom. So automatically, you become the ate or the older sister of everyone that you're teaching. You become a guidance counselor, sometimes a love advisor, a first aid provider, and a lot more. So that's really challenging, and it re there's a lot of expectations for teachers. For me, the most difficult aspect of being a science teacher is really fighting the prejudice of the student because they have that notion, some of them have the notion that science is a difficult subject. But in fact, it's very practical to study science because it's everywhere. It's what happens to us in our daily lives. And once they have that notion that it's difficult, it's a bit difficult to break the barrier in order for them to actually understand, actually appreciate the subject. First and foremost, Konti lang yung nagtitake ng ganitong film. I mean, the science education film. Kasi, um, laging nilang iniisip na biology, always leading to med school. Pero hindi nila naiisip na may iba pa palang opportunity na pwede mong i-apply or pwede mo pang gawin when you are a biology graduate. What else? Most difficult aspect. Kakulangan sa materiales. Um... I think all of the science teacher will relate to that na yung kailangan mo tuloy mag-improvise ng mga bagay-bagay para lang makita ng mga students na ah, okay this is the application of the lesson. Doing anything of value is certainly never easy. But it is certainly worth all the blood, sweat and tears. Seeing my students succeed in their chosen fields and contribute something meaningful to society are some of the most fulfilling aspects of being an educator for me. But I wonder, what could be the most fulfilling aspect of being a science educator for Jane, Mao, and Shen? May times na nadadala pa rin nila yung nalalaman nila, which is, I think, that's the most fulfilling aspect of being a teacher kasi you get to impart to them what you have taught them. And also, since my students are also following, especially my Instagram account, may mga times na napopost ko rin yung mga laboratory activities ko and my masters. And then, they will ask me, the teacher, what did you do during these times? Or what are you reading? So with that, I get to share with them what am I doing as well and what will be my further research uh, interest with them? For me, the most fulfilling aspect of being a science teacher is really seeing your student appreciate the subject. It's actually a bonus if you could ignite some student a passion to pursue a career in science or to have good grades. But more than that, it's really seeing them being appreciative of the subject and seeing how practical it is to apply in our daily lives, that they see the importance of science. It's not just a bunch of formulas, a bunch of concepts that they learn in textbooks, in classroom, but it has a real life application and they appreciate it and they can apply it. Being a teacher actually gives you a chance already to change the future and that entails a lot of work and responsibility. Um, I think for me, another fulfilling aspect of being a science teacher as a person who studies STEM is that you walk out, out of the classroom fulfilled that you're able to share your knowledge about the subject area or if not your knowledge, you're able to share with your students your passion about a certain field of science and you get the chance to teach them how to do science. Let me just emphasize that the Philippines needs more scientists and our STEM educators are crucial in inspiring the next generation of STEM advocates and researchers. So, let's hear one more time from our Shiro's about their message to young Filipinas who are interested in going into the field of STEM 
or science education. Teaching is very hard, but it's actually very fulfilling. You get to contribute to the community in a positive way, and a lot of people may feel discouraged to, fulfill, to follow this career because it entails a lot of work. But as they say, teaching tugs the heart, opens the heart, even breaks the heart. And the more ones love teaching, the more heartbreaking it can be. If you're trying to look for a career in STEM that is both challenging and very meaningful, I highly recommend you try to teach. We already have a lot of Filipino women in this field that are really excelling. So I'm actually very happy that we are not afraid anymore to show our interest in science to help the society. After all, doing science is not about the gender. Okay? It's really about your passion to study it, your passion to learn more about things, and of course, to help the society. So I believe that um, you should not be afraid of studying this, whether whatever our gender preferences, but it's really about our heart to do science. You always go back to the goal that you have in mind, and little by little, you, you wouldn't notice or you wouldn't know that, oh, okay, you have reached in this kind of objective of yours or your goals of yours already. So I also have the song in mind as well. If I feel unmotivated, I always go back with this song. Mga batikos, wag nang diringgin, baka walang lang yan sa hangin. Bukas ay malapit na rin dumating. Lumaban ka pa rin. Thank you so much to our Shiros for sharing with us your time and experiences and helping empower young women in the field of STEM. It truly is amazing to find out what it's like to be a science educator. To our viewers, I hope you were able to learn something new in our short video for today. And if you did, I hope you can give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to our channel. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please don't hesitate to message me, your resident Filipina scientist, in the comment section below. Thank you very much, and see you around!